Previously on Buy a House with Sweat Equity. Both the Farron family and the Alley family have decided not to proceed right now. I was going through the numbers with them and they turned as white as a ghost. And I could tell they were scared. Things changed with the couples I wanted to do this with. I went to him and I said, do you know anybody else that we could get to do this? I want to introduce everybody right now to Hassan and Darshani. Okay, let's go. That's amazing. Yeah, it looks like the perfect fixer upper. How are you? Good, how are you? This is Darshani and Thank you know you. Hassan already. Hello, Hassan. The main thing is, Look at the amount of space you have. Let's go take a look. It's offering thousands and thousands of dollars in incentives to increase the quality of the heating and con air conditioning, the cooling. So the big question is, do you like it? Do you want to buy it? Yes. I don't, I don't care what you say. I know you are. Yes. Good job. Share some love with the Farrens in the alleys. Number two, tell me your biggest takeaway. Number three, share this episode on next week's show. I'm going to do something crazy that I haven't done yet. Let me tell you what it is. Number one, I'm going to give away $1,000 cash. But more importantly than that, one of you, just for doing that simple thing, is going to win a two-day trip with me on my luxury 60-foot yacht. We'll see you next week. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are in a really neat place right now. Have, can you guys believe the amount of mayhem that's already happened in this show? I mean, think about everything we've been through together. We started off with this incredible hunt where we went through hundreds of applications. We narrowed it down to two after all those amazing interviews. We lost them both. <laughs> and they're both watching. They both called me after last week's episode and thanked me for, you know, all the things I said. And I really meant that. And I want you guys to go into the chat right now as we're getting started and throw some more love into the chat for the Farrens and the Alley family because they're unbelievable. But even better than that, I mean, what did you guys think of the twist, really, right? It was Hassan that gave me this idea and got us onto this whole national mission that we're on here. So it only made sense. It, I almost feel like an idiot for not thinking of that right up front. Hassan and Darshani are the perfect family to do this with. And so we went and showed them the house. They have not stopped talking about it. The one challenge I've created for myself is now my director of marketing won't freaking shut up about this house that he's buying. Anyway, I'm having fun with you right now. In today's show, I've asked Amal, our real estate agent, to join us in the studio and they want to put in an offer. So we're going to talk about what that actually means. We're going to go through the entire process. And I've got a couple really cool highlights for you as well, right after this. My name's Ken Dunn. I'm a real estate investor, developer, and a national housing advocate. For decades now, thousands and thousands of Canadian families have been stuck in situations that they don't want. They want to own homes. They want a place to call their own and raise their families. And they're struggling trying to put the money together for a down payment. They're struggling trying to keep their credit in good standing, paying for rent, being moved around, and never feeling settled down. Real estate investors have been using strategies for decades where they buy houses with other people's money, they borrow the money to increase the value, and they sell the houses making incredible profits. I'm going to show these Canadian families how to use the same techniques to buy their dream homes. They're not going to need down payments. They're not going to need credit because they're going to buy a house with sweat equity. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm super excited. Amal, thanks for joining us in the studio today. You're welcome, Ken. It's always a pleasure. So, guys, are you nervous right now? Like, is this like, tell me about your feelings about being brought into this at the last minute. You saw the house. Now we're sitting here and we're about to buy it. Like, how, how, what kind of things have been going on between the two of you? Excitement, <laughs> nervous. I don't know. I think I was talking too much last time. <laughs> that was the way of expressing my nervousness. So, very happy, thrilled. It's a mixed emotion. Yeah. Well, you know how I've been feeling about <laughs> it. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's excitement and it's more disbelief. You know, it's like uh, we get to own a house. Yeah. Yeah. So it's well, and it's interesting because like what you told me when we first talked about this and how you tried to do it before and you even had the money, like you had hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings to use towards the house and they wouldn't do it because you were new and you didn't have a credit score. It, it, it's got to almost feel surreal. Um, 
and doing this. And I remember when you first said to me, I was explaining this program to you and you said, well, can I buy a house doing that? And that just blew my mind to realize that there's a different aspect to this. It's almost like you created this opportunity for yourself. Well, I wouldn't go as far as create saying that I created this opportunity. I think I just said it out loud and I think you really picked up on that pain point. Um, the fact of the matter at least still remains, you know, that not a lot of people are aware that this thing exists. Yeah. So, so when you picked that up and you said, yes, completely, it's totally doable. I was like, okay, well. Well, this is the part, This like I'm excited that we're gonna do this. We're gonna put this purchase agreement together and, and submit an offer. I'm also nervous because as Amal will tell you, you know, we've looked at 20, 25 houses. Yeah. And we got excited a couple of times only to find out that they went like that. These, the houses in this price point really seem to be, like the, the market seems to have calmed, like the big high ticket prices, the million dollar homes seem to be slow, but in this mid range, it seems like it's as crazy as ever. Yes, because of the bracket. So people are better able to afford these prices mm -hmm. versus the higher bracket yeah, with yeah. the interest rates right now. Yeah. So really, if you like something and if it makes sense, then the next step is jump on let's, it. Let's mm -hmm. let's get let's get going. Yeah. Jump on it. Yeah. And, you know, Amal, so what I'd love for you to do right now is maybe before we get into the details, let's talk through what's involved in this when you're dealing with a real estate agent and you're buying a property. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are watching the show that have never done this before, right. that, that are really new to this. So why don't you talk about like what's actually involved in submitting an offer? I know we've got some documents to review. What are these documents and what are the things we should be watching for? So one of the things that people, especially who haven't gone through this process, um, need to understand before this, there's two other steps. Okay. The first is you're picking your realtor like myself to work with you. Yep. Um, and then there's an agreement that you have to sign, which is between yourself, the buyer and the brokerage. And this is where you kind of like bind yourself and say, okay, this is the realtor I want representing me yeah. and looking after my best. Interest. This is the buyer agency agreement. That's right. right. And, and the reason I, I think they're important is when you get to the point where you're serious about buying, you have to understand that a real estate agent is a 100% commissioned person. And That's so right. there, I think it's the right of the agent to ask for a higher level of commitment if you're going to be serious about this. Well, that's right. You're going to put in all this work and there's got to be some payout. Absolutely. But the payout only happens if you like the property. If they're happy. If it makes sense. Yeah. So really for you, it's a free service. Yep. So why would you not engage with a real estate agent to actually represent you? It's in your best interest. Yeah. And yeah. for anybody that's going to go out there and do this, it is, there is absolutely nothing wrong with signing a buyer agency agreement. The number one thing, the most important thing that I've told everybody that I teach this to is find an agent to represent you. Don't be those people that just run around to open houses and talk to the person listing the property or somebody that works on their team. Go out and interview real estate agents and find somebody that's a rock star, just like Amal is for me. And don't be afraid to make a commitment to that person because they only make money when they get you deals. And if, as long as you keep that in your mind and you've taken the time to realize it's the right person, you won't have any problems with that. Okay, so buyer agency agreement. What's next on the list? Working with a realtor. Okay. And that explains the agency relationship with the client, basically. And if there's multiple representation, then that kind of clarifies that. So as a brokerage, you can represent multiple parties for the same property or you can be on the other side where you're also the listing agent, but now you're representing the buyers as well. So that kind of explains that. And it's, it's important to understand that as well. All right. So we've got the relationship established. Now we want to buy the property. What's the next step? The next one is agreement of purchase and sale. So in here, there's the date, the buyer's details, which is yourself, the seller, the property details, how much we're going in with and the deposit. So that's the important one. Deposit is normally required 24 hours after acceptance of this offer. Right. So within 24 hours, we put in the deposit and that's the deposit section of it. It goes into the trust fund or the trust account of the brokerage that is listed the property. And that will be then uh, used towards the purchase sale. Yeah, the purchase at the end of the day. So, so essentially, what you're telling me here is they're gonna we're gonna do up an actual document that we're gonna submit. This we we say the offer, but this is a contract. Oh, that, it that is a contract. It's legal, yep. and it's important to understand everything 
that's on here. So you're not just signing blindly. And in this contract, obviously the who we're buying from is there, who's buying the property is put in there. The deposit is an interesting thing. The, the amount of money that you put in a deposit really is subjective. You get to decide how much money you want to put into a deposit. Now there are some general kind of overlying rules or not rules because it's not cast in stone. Best practices. Best practices, Yeah. 5% plus HSD, which is what we're doing today. Right, so so essentially what they're saying is we're gonna go in and we're, we've already discussed this. We're gonna offer the full price that they're asking. And the reason is because we've seen all of these places go so damn quick, right? Exactly. And so we're gonna do that. And then, so if we're coming in at five, what is it, 599? 525. 525, then 5% of that would be $25,000. Yes, plus HSD. So we're, we're going in with $30,000. $30,000. So that means Hassan and Darshni are going to have to put the $30,000 in up front. And, and what I suggest to most people that are following this, if cash is tight, use a credit card for this. Because it does become part of the purchase. And when you borrow the money to get the mortgages to do it, you can actually pay yourself the $30,000 back. So it's kind of like a temporary loan you're making to yourself to get the deposit done. What else do we have in a purchase agreement outside of those things? So the other thing you have to understand is there is an irrevocable time. What that means is how much time are we giving the sellers uh, to decide whether or not they're gonna accept this offer or not. Or respond to it. If exactly. they want if they want us to pay more or have any other That's conditions. That's right. It could be either accepted, rejected, or it, it comes back with their whatever their whatever conditions are. they want to exactly. change. Yep. Exactly. And so this normally I deal with the listing agent because it's always good to know what their schedule is, what their flexibility is. Are the sellers available? You can't just put whatever time you might just damper that. But that you leave it to me and I'll, you know, here we we've given them till eight PM tonight to make sure that they come back to us and that's sufficient time for him to actually go meet the sellers and discuss the deal and hopefully get accepted. So part of what you're doing for these guys as their agent is you're also liaising with the agent of the people who are selling. Oh, 100%. So you're having conversations with yes. him and saying, hey, we've got somebody that's coming to the table. You're gonna like the price. We wanna submit an offer. How long are you guys gonna need to respond to that offer? Right. Are the people selling available? Are they out of town? And and then they'll tell you, yeah, if you say by eight o'clock tonight. So there's some there is some there is some cooperation that's going on with oh, you and the other agent. Oh one hundred percent. Okay. Because we're both working towards the same goal. And it's so important to have that rapport with the listing agent. Introducing the ultimate in hydrotherapy and premium relaxation. Experience the epitome of artisanship with Canadian hot tubs. Meticulously handcrafted for over four decades, Canadian hot tubs are synonymous with comfort, depth, and unwavering durability. You can choose from our range of four-foot cedar tubs or indulge in the therapeutic embrace of our five-foot hydrotherapy models. Available in Canada and across the world, Canadian hot tubs bring a touch of luxury to homes worldwide. Craftsmanship that speaks for itself. Visit canhottub.com now. Okay, let's talk about conditions. This is a magical word that's a super important part of a purchase agreement. What are conditions and what are some of the conditions that we should be thinking about now putting this offer in? Okay, so there's some standard, you know, clauses in here. For example, chattels included. So anything like the fridge or anything that, picture this, if you flip a house upside down and whatever falls off, those are all chattels. That, that basically means like any any appliances, like the you know the furnace, all this stuff mm -hmm. that that wouldn't be actually part of the house, yeah. but you want to keep because it makes the house work. So okay. you want to put that in whatever we saw that's available. Mm -hmm. um, if the rent, if there's a rental item, for example, the hot water tank, that's going to go on there mm -hmm. as well. Fast forward to the conditions. So here's the important thing: with conditions, you actually have a leeway. And I mean, I don't know how, how to say this, but when you go in with a condition, it kind of gives you a cushion. So when you're, for example, there's the finance condition, right? Which is generally five business days to be able to get approved for a mortgage. In case if you're not approved, you're able to get out of the contract and get your deposit back. So there's a bunch of different conditions. The first one that we want to talk about is a finance condition. Right. And the finance condition, is basically you telling the bank or you telling the people that you're selling, 
that there needs to be a period of time after they accept the offer where we can take the accepted offer to the bank and arrange the mortgage. That's right. The bank won't talk to us. None of the banks will talk to us until we have an accepted purchase. Exactly. So yes. you put, is five days pretty well standard for five, a finance condition? Yeah. Five business days. Okay, what other conditions do we have to think about? Inspection. Okay, talk about uh, that. And so what happens is you do the same thing. You say, hey, I need five business days or three business days, depending on the inspector, if they're available or not. So what's an inspection for? Inspection actually gives you uh, an idea of what's coming. So how the roof, the windows, they cannot see behind the walls, Ken. Yeah. We both know this. It's not a regulated profession. But what it actually does is gives you a peace of mind. So it's purchasing. Hey, uh, the roof will be mm, ready in another five years. They give you kind of like a timeline. Of so you can almost have a budget of repairs that you're going to exactly. do down the road. But the other thing that's important about an inspection clause, I think this is the most important clause because when we go look at the property, we can only see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. And, and as Amel was saying, we can't see what's behind the walls. You know, I, we looked at the electrical panel in the basement and we know we have to improve that. We have to replace that. But an inspector will actually be able to look at all the current coming out of the panel and make sure that all the wires in the walls are working properly, which is a hugely important thing. The other thing they'll do is they'll look at the septic system. Now we're on city water here, city septic. So all the gray water in the house goes into a septic system. But the inspector will look at how that happens and make sure there's no leaks, make sure there's nothing that could cause any troubles. Yeah. Um, and this is a real story about, gosh, this would have been, I was 25 years old at the time. So 30 years ago, I was a police officer in a place called Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And um, I was on a SWAT team at the time, but we would normally, when it wasn't busy, we would drive around in the police cars and do regular patrols and just kind of let the world know we're there, keep everybody thinking. Um, and right in, like it was about one o'clock in the morning and every police car within 50 miles was dispatched to an explosion where a residential house blew up completely. And when we got to the scene, there was nothing left of it. Thank God the family was actually away on vacation at the time. So nobody was hurt. The house was completely destroyed. And you know what caused it? A leak in the septic system. Oh my gosh. So this septic system, all the septic systems have poop and stuff going through them. Mm -hmm. It emits a gas called methane. methane. Mm -hmm. If there's ever a leak in that, even the smallest leak in that methane gas gets close to the furnace. So they had a propane furnace with a burner, like a little pilot light that keeps going. Mm -hmm. Methane gas got to the pilot light and exploded. The whole place it was gone. All, All we saw was a big hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what an inspector will do was go and check sure. that stuff to make sure there's no leaks and anything like that. The other thing that I love about this inspection condition, and you correct me if I'm wrong, when you do an inspection condition, they agree. What they're saying, what we're saying is, we don't know what we don't know. So we're gonna get an inspector to go in and do a full inspection of the property. And if the inspector comes back and says to you guys, and they say this confidentially, they don't even tell the other party, you shouldn't buy this house. This, this foundation is completely destroyed. Yes, it's yes. gonna fall down because mm -hmm. they checked the foundation. You can go back to through a mile and kill the deal mm -hmm. and just walk away from it. And you, it's, conditional. Yeah. it's conditional on passing the inspection. Now, here's the good thing. You don't have to tell them why you're dropping it. Exactly. You just say the inspection failed. So one of the things that I will always do is sometimes, depending on how hot the market is, I won't put a financing condition in my contracts, but I'll keep an inspection condition in there. And if something happens with the financing, mm -hmm. now all the real estate agents that just heard me say that are going to be angry about this. And some people selling houses are going to be angry too, but I don't care. I'm here to protect the people that are buying the house. And we're not going to do that anyway. We're going to put a financing condition in. Okay. But what's mo really important to understand is these conditions are in place to protect the person that's buying the house. Absolutely. If you live in this amazing country and you dream about having a house for your family, a home you can call your own, but you haven't been able to do that because you have a hard time building up a down payment or the banks are telling you they can't help you because of credit, then pay attention. This ad is for you. My name is Ken Dunn, and I'm a real estate investor and a national housing advocate. I have to tell you, there's a housing crisis going on right now, but the governments aren't going to fix it for you. All the governments are worried about is building more apartments, building more rental units. But until we figure out a way to help 
Canadians right across this country to buy homes with no money, then the crisis is never going to end. But don't worry, I've got the solution. I've been investing in real estate projects for more than 30 years, and I've never used any of my own money to buy the real estate. Here's what happens. I find a place that I want to buy. I look for places that are cheaper than the market. So they're the below value, and I buy the, the properties with private money, 100%. And then I renovate the properties, increase the value. Then I go to the bank and say, hey, I own this house that's worth 800,000 and I only need a mortgage for 600,000 and they give me the mortgages. And you know what the dirty little secret the banks won't tell you is? If you have equity in the property, they're not gonna ask to see your credit. They're not gonna ask about your loans. They don't ask about any of that stuff. I wanna show you how to do this. I've helped hundreds of Canadian families just like you to buy homes without a down payment. And in this live workshop, I'm going to show you how to go out and find an undervalue house in your community that would make the right home for your family. And it's a fixer upper. Then I'm going to show you how to buy that property without using any money. You use private investors funds and I'll show you how to get them. Then I'm going to show you how to renovate the property using other people's money. And then once it's done, you're going to own a house that's got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in it. And you can easily get a bank loan and live happily ever after. It's called buying a house with sweat equity. And if you click on the link, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay. So we've talked about the finance condition the inspection condition. Um, did we talk about the appraisal? Uh, no, we didn't. So it, it's another condition. We're gonna get an appraisal done so we can have a company come in, a real appraiser, cost about 500 bucks. And I, I strongly encourage everybody to do this. The appraiser is gonna get a value. He's gonna tell us what the house is worth. And most often we know from our experience that we're paying, we're offering something that the place is worth. But I've seen cases where the appraiser will come back and say, you're paying, you're paying 525. This place is only worth 450,000. Mm -hmm. And you can then use the appraisal. If that were to happen, go back to the other side and say, Hey, we have to adjust the price okay. and they have the right to drop the deal, yes. but it's still, it it's still a protection, right? Yeah. So Ken, it, it all depends whether it's a condition or a clause. And normally that condition is a tough one to make it a condition because a lot of appraisals happen. You can't say within five days, cause it all depends on the bank when they're going to send in. Right. right? So, it's something that it's even to the benefit of the seller. If you get rejected by the bank, then going forward, anyone who wants to buy that property will have the same issue. So more than likely the seller will adjust and hopefully it won't be that much of a difference. Cause right. I think properties are generally priced well, and, you know, in the case, if, if somebody's doing a yeah. private deal though, what I would really encourage you to do is think about getting an appraisal done immediately and paying for it yourself. Now, when you hire a lender, when you get a, a bank, uh, most reputable appraisal companies will be accepted by the bank and you could have that appraisal assigned to the bank for their purposes. But the reason I always get an appraisal done myself is because I can get it done faster before my financing condition is up or before my other conditions are up. And I can just have that peace of mind to know that what I'm buying the place for, it's actually worth that number. All right. Do you guys have any questions about all of this? Does this all make sense to you? Well, yeah, absolutely. And it also makes us a lot less nervous knowing that, you know, we have the right people helping yeah. us out. So anything, any and everything that you just said, I was not aware of it. I just knew that you have to pay a 20% down payment and you buy the home. Mm -hmm. So all this information about checking the house, making sure that you're financing in place, right. the right use of conditions, how it benefits the buyer. So that is very interesting for me. Like it makes me a lot less nervous and a lot more confident. Now. And that's how it should be when you hire the right realtor, right? Absolutely. Yes? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got to know what you're getting into. Yeah. Um, the other stuff is all standard things like make sure the seller agrees to leave the premises clean without any debris, remove all their stuff. So that when you're actually moving in, in this case scenario, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but when an end user is moving in, they don't want to deal with somebody else's stuff. And that happened to me when I bought my property. Right. Their, the garage was filled with their stuff. Yeah. And my realtor couldn't do anything. It was a done deal. It was done. It was closed. Cool. And I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Well, you want to go to small courts? 
No. <laughs> but then I have to pay somebody now to come and pick up stuff that doesn't belong to me. Right. So we want to make sure that's done. And so we go and check the property a day before it closes. That That's when we use our second you know, visit, because right. that's one of the clauses that we're allowed to go see the property two more times before it closes. Okay, let's, let me stop you right there, because this, this is also something we ask for, two visits, right? Yes. One of the things that I do in all my real estate deals and that we need to do in this deal as well is that we don't want to visit two times, we want to visit five times between now and closing. And friends, this is something you can ask for in any purchase agreement. Some agents will have an issue with that because they're just so used to doing the things the way they are. But I'll tell you why you want to do five visits and you want to be able to do that is if you get your offer accepted, you're now up against the clock. You have to arrange the financing for the property. You also have to get your budget figured out for your renovations. So the reason I say five times is I want to go back right away. As soon as accepted, the offer is accepted. And I want to go through the place in detail and figure out my budget, figure out what I want to do and how much it's going to cost. As soon as I figure that out, I'm going to put together all my packages to raise the funds to do this, which we'll talk about in the next episodes. Then I need to get contractors to come in to figure out exactly what they can do for me. So I need to get quotes to get the work done and make sure they're in my budgets. I've done this hundreds of times and I've been able to get all that work done in those five visits. The reason you wanna do all that is eventually this is gonna close. The day that it closes, you wanna be ready to get your contractors in there, get your demolition done and get to work renovating this property. So if you can get your real estate agent to cooperate with you and ask them to put five visits in, it'll allow you to do all that work before you're closing. All right, how do you feel about all this? I'm excited for you guys. Yeah? We are very are excited. Yes. Yeah. Awesome, okay. All right, friends, so we're not gonna stay on air to fill out these forms, but we're submitting an offer today. And you've gotta come back next week to find out if they get the property and watch the rest of this magic happen. Oh damn, listen, I totally forgot. Last week, I told you guys that anybody who did three little things, give the Farrens and the Alleys some love, share this video, comment about your biggest takeaway, was going to go in a draw for $1,000 cash and two days on a trip on my yacht with me, and I forgot to tell you who it was. So, here's the deal, the winner is Adam Finch. Adam, you just won a thousand bucks in two days on my yacht with me, masterminding and sailing around Lake Ontario, brother. All you have to do is send our, uh, an email to our support team and they'll get that information for you. Friends, don't forget, this journey is just getting started.